Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. And in today's reading, we are doing a, a very interesting reading in my opinion. A and it's been suggested by one of you through the community tab. It is what spiritual gift or ability do you currently have that can improve your life right now? Sometimes we know about our skills that we use in our everyday life, but getting to know about our spiritual gifts and abilities that we may not have really been aware of, maybe we use it even without noticing, maybe we think this is the normal thing that everyone has, <laughs> being aware of it would definitely help us in our everyday life. Being conscious of it and, and using it consciously to improve something would definitely make a big change in our lives. And to do this reading, these are the three piles for you to pick from today. For pile number one, you have the fire quartz in the shape of a heart. And this is what your crystal looks like. For pile number two, you have the peach moonstone, also in the shape of a heart. And for pile number three, actually, let me put them here because some of you like to see the crystals on their own. So let me place them right there. And for pile number three, you have the banded green agate in the shape of a heart. So take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to and that will probably be the pile for you here today. As I always encourage you, if your intuition is drawing you to more than one pile, maybe even all of the piles today, then these will also be your piles. Feel free to check them out. And once you're ready, um, please head down to the description box, click on your times, and, and I'll see you there in your reading. In a moment, I'm about to assign zodiac signs for each pile. If this is something that you enjoy, then please stick around and watch it. If not, if you like to pick through your intuition only, then please pause the video, take as much time as you need. And once you're ready, I'll see you in your readings. Okay, but if you love picking through your zodiac signs, this part of the reading is specially for you. Let's now, Oy, let's turn them the other way around. Let's shuffle these cards so that we, we can see, we can find out which zodiac signs, these two I feel like they went there, so we'll keep them there. Find out which signs today for this reading are going to be assigned to which pile. Right, so this is pile number one. Are these four? That, that's pile number two, and these will be pile number three. Let's find out what we have. So for pile, the signs for pile number one, we have the sign of Libra, the sign of Capricorn, the sign of Gemini, and the sign of Cancer. For pile number two, we have the signs of Aquarius, the sign of Sagittarius, the sign of Pisces, and the sign of Taurus. As for pile number three, the signs are Leo, Virgo, Aries, and Scorpio. So these are the signs for today's reading. 
I truly hope you enjoy this section uh, of picking your pile. You can use either Western or Vedic astrology. I personally uh, do it with the intention of Western astrology. I would love to learn more about Vedic astrology. I read a lot about it. It's very interesting. But yeah, I'm still, I still need to learn more about it. Please choose your preferred system. And you can either go by rising, sun or moon. Maybe other things. As I always say, some of you pick other signs to choose from. Some of you love picking by your north node. That was surprising for me. Some of you like to pick with your Venus. It's all up to you. If you were to ask me as a suggestion, then in that case, I would highly encourage you to choose your rising. It is the sign that deals with your outer world. And it will be, in my opinion, the sign that will resonate with you the most. But of course, Picking by the sun sign is always <laughs> what we intuitively feel uh, we want to pick with. So please do whatever resonates with you, whether it's your sun and also with your moon. Moon is your feelings. It's your intuition. Uh, it's another great way to pick your piles with, with. And that's why we always say sun, moon and rising. So do what feels right to you. And once you're ready, please head down to the description box click on your times and I'll see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. If you chose with your crystal, then your crystal is the rose quartz for this reading. Uh, but if you chose with your zodiac signs, then in that case, the zodiac signs for this reading, in case, like I said, you chose with your zodiac signs are Libra, Capricorn, Gemini and Cancer. Welcome to your reading, guys. Today we're taking a look at what spiritual gift or ability do you have uh, that can improve your life right now? And to do this reading, these are the oracle decks that we will be using today. I kind of feel like it's this one. Oh, and this one. All right, so let's check them out and see what they are. So you have toil and labor. Can you see your card? There we go. I don't know why the number 38 really stood out to me, but let's keep it here for now. You have vase, uh, devastation, loss, recovery. Okay. You have boundaries, protection. Wow, that does that, that um, feels very strong here. Very powerful indeed. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll let you know in a moment, but this is really cool actually. And you have guidance, direction. Hmm. I love the ego. I'm getting a strong sense of power from the people of this pile. Okay. We also have the green Tara. And let's now take a look at your tarot cards. So for pile number one, what is their spiritual gift or ability that they have that can improve their lives right now? Please. Okay. So let's see what you have, my dear pile number one. So you have the king of cups. Very interesting. I'm, to I'm definitely seeing power here uh, in your reading. And I'll tell you why with the king of cups in a moment. And you have the ten of pentacles. I, I love this pile. The six of wands. The fool card. You have the devil, hmm. 
very interesting. The Queen of Swords. You have the Moon card. The Page of Pentacles. And we've got two more cards that we, we will explore at a later time during the reading. They came out for a reason. Okay, so the first thing I'm definitely noticing in your reading right off the bat is one of your spiritual gifts or abilities that you have that a lot of people don't is a strong, powerful aura where energies, certain energies can hit other people easily, break them, affect their aura, affect their energy, affect their psyche. To you, you're, you exude such power and you probably are seen, probably, you're definitely as seen, you're definitely seen by others as someone who's got this powerful aura around them, like uh, you've got this intimidating energy once you come into a room. I'm just giving you a couple of things that you can connect to realize this energy. And then later we're gonna take a look at how you can use it to improve your life at the moment. So what I'm seeing here, you've got this powerful aura, uh, you probably get into a room, you're instantly noticed, you're not just anyone walking into a room, you, people can feel your vibe, they can feel your in, uh, strong energy. And the amazing thing is, uh, you probably are someone who's blessed to a great extent with great health, at least your endurance to things is much stronger than others. Uh, and um, you could perceive others to be more fragile than you are. And your endurance to work and do things that are necessary is much uh, longer than regular people. You're able to um, either go through difficulties in a much more powerful way. You're able to, with the toil and labor, do more physical or more tasks. It doesn't have to be physical. More tasks and be able to endure it longer than others. You're, you've got such strong energy that can allow you to finish and do things much, much, much more than other people. So that can be very useful to you, not just in protecting yourself, but what type of effect you can have on the things you are working on. You have here, like I mentioned, Kraken in, Nor in Norse mythology, the, uh, the eight-armed octopus who, with their strong energy, are able to influence great currents in the ocean or the sea, affecting everything else. So very strong, powerful energy that's not just there to protect you, but is there to give you uh, and not there to give you the endurance that is much, much, much bigger than other people. But it's also there where you can do something small with all of that intuitive power, with that gift, if you put like perhaps your uh, strong attention into it. You see compassion with action yields results. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Like if you put your intention into something, it will yield great results for you. And you can see it there with the Ten of Pentacles. Small efforts with great focus will give you, with the Ten of Pentacles, so much abundance and prosperity and results in whatever it is that you're trying to do. It gives you great success and it gives you the power to have the confidence to begin many new things. You know, these two remind me of the lover's card because you see a figure here with two other women. It reminds me of the lover's card, for, like um, the ones we see in Marseille, for example. And it's ha the lover's card has always been a card of choice. So 
these two aspects in the full card give me the idea that you have the capability to embark into whatever your heart chooses to do because you will be successful. Uh, you have a runner up. It's not the Ace of Pentacles. It's the Page of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles is the new beginning, just like the Fool. Uh, but the Page of Pentacles is a new chapter. It's also a new beginning. But the pages are uh, a level up. Like you have from the Ace to the Tens, one level. And then you start having another level from the Page to the Kings. So you're already starting at a great advantage over everyone else. You have great power that allows you to begin with, that allows you to begin things uh, and have great effect in whatever you want to commence or start. So where is that taking us? To the Queen of Swords and the Bodhisattva. I see something very interesting here. But before we get into it, I just want to let you know, I'm not sure exactly what could be <clears throat> going on in your life at the moment. But what I'm seeing here in your cards is the capability of influencing others to a great extent. So uh, let me show you what I'm seeing. The Queen of Swords, do you see this Queen of Swords holding uh, her sword in such a sassy way, you know, like, ha, huh, come here. <laughs> if you don't do what I say, I'm going to wreak havoc. Ha <laughs> ha. There's this sassiness, confident sassiness. And it's definitely something that uh, you exude naturally. You know, having the confidence to have whatever you want done because you're a very influential character with the Queen of Swords. A strong character, for sure. The Queen of Swords does what she thinks is right regardless of how she feels uh, about it. In contrast, however, you have the Bodhisattva, the Green Tara. So you, you can even see it here on the card. Compassion with action yields results. And this is what I was wanted to get to. So the Bodhisattva, she is there to help everyone with compassion. And what do you get with a strong character exuding such power who would do things with compassion? Instant charisma. This is what charisma means. Because when you're kind and nice without strength, it's mistaken for weakness and could even be taken for granted. And what do you get with strength without charisma? You get things done, but you don't really get to influence people uh, from their hearts, you definitely influence them with your mind, but you don't get the influence that you want with someone who wants to, from the bottom of their heart, do something uh, that is aligned with your vision. And that's why you have the devil card right next to it. Devil does not mean evil. It just means imbalance. And it could be the, per, the it, it's not could be, it's the persona on the outside that you exude naturally um, that is carrying your, your pure, beautiful soul. So what you're reading is making you aware of is not letting go of that amazing power that you have because that's healthy. That's, that's like... Um, Something that you exude naturally. It's, it's a, one of your spiritual gifts. You exude such power. No one can really come near you. Now, your reading is showing you that if you help others or speak to others or do things, combine that with compassion, you instantly 
create a bond with people that will, just like the witches, magically help you get what you need in your life done. Or not what you need, people aren't going to be working for you. But I mean, they're going to be aligned with your vision. And this way, the things that you want to achieve in your life, the, new, the choices that you want to make, the new things that you want to embark on, um, you will be able to achieve with that type of wisdom. Having everyone aligned with your wisdom, attracting people to you through your natural power, along with the charisma that is drawing them to you or the kindness that they believe because they can see the power exuding from you. So it instantly translates to people. This is a person who chooses to be kind. While there are many people who don't exude that power and are misunderstood, that with you, it's instantly seen. And you are definitely a natural leader because you're starting out things on a far bigger level than others with that type of power that you have to begin anything with. And that's why you have guidance and direction. Whatever it is that you are trying to improve in your life, I see that you are able to be a leader, a great guide, someone who is able to influence your environment, the people around you, and adding a bit of compassion or kindness to your energy will give you a balance that is irresistible to anyone. Like, let's say you want to begin something new and you want others to cooperate with you or companies or suppliers to cooperate with you or a new team to cooperate with you or a, a, a new neighbors to cooperate with you. Life has to do with people in anything, nearly, nearly anything that we do. So whatever it is that you have in your life at the moment, combining these two elements together will definitely make you a winner in the new endeavors that you want to embark uh, into or the new ways of doing things that you want to do. So you have two more cards. Let's see what you have. Oh my, you have the three of swords. This is really interesting. <laughs> and you have the magician. Interesting, but I'm not really yet able to understand what it's saying in your reading. I'm actually picking up something. Oh, it is talking about, of course, what am I thinking? It's talking about your spiritual gift that you have. It's actually telling you to be careful with something. Because here with the Three of Swords, you have the Mananangal. That is a Philippine legend of these terrifying creatures. Shape-shifting, terrifying creatures with the magician, I believe this is saying that do note, my dear pal number one, that you have such strong, intimidating energy that when you get upset and angry, it is not only felt through your strong character, that anger or that, or your upsetting um, communication, it is also felt energetically with the magician. Do not forget that this is not just a strong character. Of course it is. Don't get me wrong. Of course it is that you have. But it's supported by great spiritual abilities. There is energy, do you see, surrounding you that is felt by others. And I'm not sure you are aware of that or not, but it instantly makes anyone learn that you're a strong character. Even if you get into a place and someone gives you their back, they can feel a strong presence that they can't explain. So you exude power. So be careful when you are upset not to compare your effect with others because when they are upset, they don't exude this magical 
power that you have. And so this results in people being more afraid of you and making it hard sometimes to deal with you or to um, not deal with you. Yeah, like to respond back or and you may win as a strong power, but you may not have that uh, great surrounding that can otherwise help you to build more important things than winning the battle. You know, when they say maybe you won the battle, but not the war. So your reading is telling you don't really focus on battles, winning battles, because you can really, you can easily winning, win it without the Three of Swords. Three of Swords shows like great emotional agony, uh, emotional disturbance, um, feeling really upset. So you, even if you express your, how you're upset calmly and uh, kindly with your type of power, it's still going to be felt because if you're upset, that has power. And so I think your reading is telling you, be careful, be aware of how powerful your energy is. It does have a strong effect and to by uh, with the three of swords i don't want to say toning it down i want to say by realizing that even if you express your upset calmly it will still it will absolutely be felt but then you can handle situations with others in a much more effective way and in a more constructive way. So my dear pile number one, very interesting reading. <laughs> this is exactly what I see as your spiritual gift, or your spiritual ability that can help you improve your life right now. This was your message through today's reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it, my beautiful pile number one. <laughs> and if you have, please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I do post readings nearly every single day and it would be lovely to have you as part of this beautiful community. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! Hi pile number two, welcome to your reading. If you chose this pile using your peach moonstone crystal, then this will be your reading. If you, however, chose your pile using your zodiac signs, then in that case, only for you guys, the zodiac signs will be Aquarius, Sagittarius, Pisces, and Taurus. Also welcome to your reading. Okay, let's create space for your reading. Move your tarot deck to the side and focus on pulling out your oracle cards before we begin. Okay. Let's pull out your last oracle card. And today we're taking a look at what spiritual gifts or abilities do you have that can improve your life right now. Let's pull out this card as your significator. Interesting. You have locket there. So it says commitment, loved ones and partnerships. And you have the um, Philosopher's Stone here. Very, very cool. Right, let's keep it here for now. You also have the Tombstone. Again, the Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> How interesting in that is that? What are the odds? So you have with the Tombstone, Death, Grief, Legacy. Okay. You have child, beautiful. Do you notice with tombstone and child, it's like one life has ended and a new one, one is beginning. Also with the philosopher's stone, it's turning regular metal into gold. So I'm seeing some maybe shape shifting abilities or the ability to create something out of nothing, 
I don't know. We have to wait. I always say wait. <laughs> you have intuition with knowing. Yeah, my psychic pile right there with pile number two. And you have the, oh, hold on. That's better. Better be careful with the new YouTube rules. So you have Padma Dakini because uh, many of the videos got striked uh, because of nudity. So we have to be careful. Right. So Padma Dakini. All right. So let's take a look at your tarot cards and find out what spiritual gift or ability do you have? that i feel this one moving that can help you in your life right now okay so let's see what cards you have so you have the seven of cups the ace of cups the wheel of fortune that is fantastic you have the queen of swords yes 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 okay you have the page of cups the six of wands the five of cups wow the seven of wands we have two more we actually have space here the nine of pentacles I I impressive how <laughs> the cards are aligning and you have the two of pentacles makes absolute sense okay so where do we begin with this reading oh my god So I kind of, no, not kind of, I really see with the child specifically and having seen the seven of cups, it seems to me that you have a lot of uh, magical talents and abilities that have not been explored and open yet. And just like a child, it's like a miracle child someone who has so much capability so much magic and doesn't even know it yet you might have you know noticed it a bit here and there played with it a little bit with the page of cups but you have no idea in this pile what type of power you have oh where do we begin to make it organized and nice? Mm, the word commitment is definitely standing out to me. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second. So let's... Oh, you know what? Speaking of the Philosopher's Stone, this, uh, this circle and triangle actually it reminds me of um, the Buddhism, Buddhism concept of how to see the world since we have the Padma Dakini here. So let me let you in on something so interesting here. So the way Buddhism sees the world or practicing Buddhism is like looking at the world. So that's the circle looking at the world through a prism, right? Let, let me pick one of these up. So practicing Buddhism is like looking at the world through a, a a prism yeah you can see it and so that is split which splits light into five different colors or let's say uh, light colors light uh, illuminated colors and th this gives us uh, a language to understand why we are the way we are so these five elements uh, are really, you can see it in Buddhism, like in, for example, a medical system, you can see 
um, the five elements of metal, wood, uh, water, fire, earth, and we can see it with the five Buddhas as well that are related to the five directions. So uh, uh, there is the west, uh, west, east, north, south, and of course the fifth is the center. So of the five Buddhas, each Buddha has uh, a Dakini. Um, it's like enlightened beings uh, with similar attributes. So here we have the Dakini of the West, right? So your cards were, were helping us <laughs> with where to begin here. Here you have the Dakini of the West, the Padma Dakini. Dakinis, you know, we always say Dakinis have this dance. And this dance is like symbolizing or showing um, making us understand that they are a sort of, uh, how do I say, uh, uh, energy that is always forever movement, moving and ready to manifest and create something, that feminine energy of creation, bringing something into the world. So the Padma Dakini is associated with the magical function of attraction. Here, you can clearly see in your reading that although you have a lot of magical powers to be explored, but the one thing I can clearly see here is your magic of, once you tune into this magic of manifesting crazy things into your world like imagine a fish coming out it's like exactly a magician's hat bringing a rabbit out of a hat bringing a fish out of a cup your magic your capability of actually manifesting what you imagine and do note by the way the padma dakini has to do with the mind she awakens the mind of a practitioner um making them aware of their enlightenment. It's like the awakening of enlightened awareness of maybe their dormant spiritual gifts. Interesting, right? So in your life, you're going to be discovering so many gifts that you have. You'll be tapping into one gift uh, after the other, you'll be shown the way, you'll be illuminated in due time, maybe you'll discovering through tumbling on something, but today you're meant to find out about something. Here, we did note that the Dakini is all about the mind, right, as well, awakening the mind, and with the Queen of Swords, you can see that you really can awaken things, birth things, with the feminine energy of the Dakini, birth things into your existence that can even be crazy to think. Like the small one, I'm imagining here, the small side of it is maybe manifesting what you want, making things happen. And the more you um, like crystallize or improve that skill, you'll actually be able, because you can see someone practicing here, their magic, right? Practicing, finding their balance. <laughs> and the more you tune into that magic, you'll actually, be able, just like the Dakini, birth things into existence. So, uh, your reading is showing you here that you fully have the capability of the mind, of with the Ace of Cups, imagining things in your mind and getting it into existence. Changing your fortunes, changing even, even, it might sound crazy because the Wheel of Fortune doesn't only have to do with fortune, it deals with the cycles of life. You can, dare I say, and I haven't read in this part and I don't know if that's possible or not, but dare I say, even change the cycles that you are experiencing. One thing I did read and you want to be careful about is I was reading about getting the, uh, having the capability of saying things into existence. I can't remember the terminology, that gift. It's not the worldly CDs, it's, I can't remember, but I did read 
that you have to be careful with gifts like that because uh, it doesn't you don't want it to come from the ego because having like supernatural powers like that and not being exactly careful if it's functioning from your ego or for the greater greater good of the world uh, or, or everyone it can make you carry karma so i'm just letting you know for future because you're moving in the in this direction for sure do know that your magical powers are so potent as you practice them that you'll be able to uh, release negative energy, reach the things that you want, create your magical world. That's all amazing. You want to be careful because this magic is going to be so potent that you may even interfere with the cycles of life or how life is meant to play out. And I'm not that educated in the subject to tell you what to be careful with. Like uh, maybe you're supposed to change things for the greater good if it's not coming out of ego. But you want to be careful with superpowers like that. If you have this superpower, obviously you can use it, right? And I think you'll be guided here with such a superpower like that. There comes guidance maybe through your meditation or something. Maybe you'll be lucky to meet unique people in your life who will help you with uh, how to how to handle with the seven of wands this type of magic because we're really talking here about big magic as you tune into it how to use it for the greater good and when not to use it right so let's leave that to the side for now i really don't have much information except from what i'm seeing to let you know but until you reach that potent power maybe you're listening to this and you have this and you're smiling <laughs> wow so sending you love um what i'm trying to tell you is that you have a lot of potent powers and you're meant to discover so much and get acquainted with it you're meant to start seeing the magic of it in your life so in diluted form, I believe, with the Nine of Pentacles, you're able to imagine things and get it into existence and manifest what you want into your life. And see, that takes practice. Uh, that takes awareness with the Dakini showing up in your reading. Perhaps with intuition through meditation, maybe you want to do more meditation, more imagination sessions. Because... As you tap into that power, you'll be able to literally shift metal into gold and at some point of your practice. So you're being guided at the moment to start practicing that. And in the beginning of your practice, my dear pal number two, you may be feeling like you've reached far, but not yet. Some things are happening and you're like, whoa, it's happening and sometimes it's not happening. And your reading is really telling you to be disciplined with your practice. Ah, I saw commitment. That's what started the whole thing, actually. And I was like, okay, it makes sense. You want discipline and commitment. And the, see, it says replace greed by cultivating discrimination. We were actually talking about how to use this power when it starts getting potent in the right way. And actually, now I'm starting to understand that you want, in order to have it in the right way, it starts by practicing it in the right way from now, from zero, or, or zero is not the right word, like from a blessed state from the beginning. Like, uh, it, this always reminds me, actually, of um, Michael Jackson's... M Michael Jackson, when I was reading his... Not diary, um, autobiography. He was saying something like his father, Joseph, was saying... He was saying, Joseph would say, it's not about practicing something every day. Because if you practice wa brushing your teeth wrong every single day you will become an expert at brushing your teeth wrong for the rest of your life. So it's not just a matter of practice. It's about practicing it right. And I believe that's what the cards are saying because here you have replaced greed by cultivating discrimination. 
we'll, we'll, we'll put the gift of discrimination in a moment, but with replacing greed, this reminds me of the Padma Dakini, uh, who is also associated with the poison of greed. So, you know, yin and yang, every blessing comes with its yin and yang, right? And you want to be careful of, you don't want to avoid the bad, it's about unity, right? So it's about realizing that greed is telling you something take the message and don't act impulsively on moving in the in in the shadow direction you want to move in the light direction with unity so listen to the message don't deny what you want listen to what it is that you want and see what it's trying to tell you what you want to heal because the more you you're healing now and fulfilling yourself now because fulfillment is so important and that's why you have the nine of pentacles by fulfilling yourself in this world you'll be able to release your attachment from it it's only when you enjoy something and get fulfilled that you're able to fully detach you're, you're meant to enjoy the world but also you're not supposed to attach to it. I don't know why we're getting into all this. Uh, I mean, I'm just <laughs> blurring out what I know. You'll be knowing more. I'm just trying to understand the energy. I'm sure as you uh, develop into your practice, you'll really fine tune this way better than I'm trying to say. So all I'm trying to say is don't deny the shadow. Uh, and from the very beginning, listen to what these greed or needs or wants are telling you heal the shadow and at the same time move into the light because starting it off from the very beginning will help you have a practice that takes you with that potent energy with the right balance that you want so for now we're taking a look at how it can help you in your life right now right <laughs> so your reading is telling you to commit to something commit to a certain practice of manifesting things in your mind by detaching your emotions because that's the queen of swords detaching emotions and wanting it with the mind but not needing it so focus on manifesting it with detachment uh, and the seven of wands is kind of like uh, showing the practice here is accepting the challenge like accepting any emotions or attachments that you feel but at the same time practicing warding them off practicing warding them off and centering one of the things i heard about the practice of detachment is to not push it but rather observe it as a third person from the outside third eye here and see oh so what does it look like what does it feel like what is it trying to say and you'll see that it's the best way to heal any emotions that arise it will dissipate into nothing where you're left with the potent energy so practice visualizing perhaps meditation visualizing i think visualizing to be honest here i think uh, visualizing what you want like maybe in a meditative state without with detachment and you'll find your balance once you reach there you'll be able to manifest in your world what you want and you're you are going to actually manifest what you want you're going to enjoy your life with the nine of pentacles uh, because it will lead to true detachment and true enlightenment And in that way, not only will you be able to help yourself in the process of enlightenment, but with the Six of Wands and this specific Six of Wands, I believe that you are going to be one of the light soldiers, uh, light, um, I don't want to say soldiers, I want to say the light knights of helping others through their awareness process pile number two wow maybe in this lifetime maybe in another maybe in this one maybe in this one because the white knight is what actually helped alice uh, 
until she was able to reach her queendom. So you'll be able to help others reach their potential, reach to the other side, their spiritual journey. So first, it's about helping your life and then with partnership, helping others. With legacy, I feel like you will have... Oh, I got shocked. <laughs> you will have, uh, like, you will be known, just like some Buddhas are known. Your words will be remembered, is what I can say. Once you are moved to the other side, there is a legacy here, meaning that your words will truly be remembered. Look, there's an opportunity. The door is... Uh, uh, knocking okay so back I, um, I thought about the door you know because I, I, it, of course it's an opportunity you'd be able to create opportunities in your life but I think the message here as we were talking about legacy I think the message here is that because the footsteps they shocked me first and then the door uh, bell shocked me so I feel like you're awakening you'll be awakening so many others from the sleep or the death or that they're in into becoming themselves and reaching their potential so until that happens you're taking your uh, baby steps into this into this and you're being asked or encouraged to start practicing because the more you practice there's time in these pentacles, if you've noticed, there, there's time, just a matter of time, this practice, that you, there's no question, you're going to master, master, and, and the baby thing about it, imagine, is attracting it into your life, attracting things into your own life, fulfilling your own life before you start having bigger roles in destiny later on. I feel like, do you see the time here as you're running? You go beyond time, my dear pal, number two, in your practice. I think you'll be out, do you see that? You'll be out of space where the square of the chessboard down there, you'll be out of space and time in the first place. And so that's why you'll be able to catch up with time and do what you need to serve for the greater good. And so you must be fulfilled first before you tap into that energy. And so the next phase of your life shows a lot of success and victory with the Six of Wands, where you'll be first for yourself reaching up high for the things that you thought one day were unreachable, enjoy them, Enjoy the success, enjoy the beautiful life in all of your dreams and thoughts. And one by one, other gifts are going to show up. Perhaps there's support to each other. You are full of gifts, pile number two. <laughs> and one day you have a huge role, by the way. And this is maybe in this lifetime or in the next, this huge role. Maybe you're like, or maybe you'll have a huge role beyond time and space. Like you'll have a huge role here and a huge role beyond that as well. Uh, there's so much <laughs> in your reading to, that is magical here to really try to understand. You'll be serving in this world and from the other world. That's exactly what I see in your reading, my dear pal number two. All the love, respect, and great wishes of abundance and spiritual growth. This is your reading and transcendence, of course. This is your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. It does help out the channel tremendously. Subscribe so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I do post readings nearly every single day. And it would be lovely to have you as part of this beautiful community. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. If you chose your pile with your crystal, then your crystal is the banded green agate in the shape of a heart. And if you chose your pile, 
using your zodiac signs that in that case your signs are aries leo virgo and scorpio so everyone watching welcome guys to your reading thank you so much for tuning in today we're taking a look at what gifts or abilities spiritual gifts or abilities do you have that will that can help you with something in your life right now or rather improve your life right now okay so let's pick this card see what your significator is wow scorpion you have danger accident subterfuge really intrigued let's see what this is all about and you have gift <laughs> speak about having a gift <laughs> that is for sure let's discover it together so here i feel like the universe is definitely confirming that you have a spiritual gift a powerful one and you with danger you, you know it is a big one you want to treat it with a lot of care you're meant to know about it today so proceed with care is what i'm seeing very very big one that could either cause enlightening with the two suns here or cause some sort of danger. Maybe the danger would be karma or who knows what it is. I don't know yet. Too early. I always tell myself to wait. <laughs> right. So you have broom, new starts, cleansing resources. You have, ah, the Ouroboros with, actually it cycles with Ouroboros. Very cool. I think in that case, and I'm waiting, I swear, I'm just saying, <laughs> in that case, the danger could be, you know, karma that could always come back to you. So you want to be careful. Okay, so let's see the rest. I saw something in my mind for you, pile number three. I envisioned that you've always had this gift in many lifetimes, and you've just cleared out some karma that you've done related to it. It was like really painful karma maybe in your past lives or maybe in this one in all cases this karma is clear and uh, you're starting anew and so now that you're starting anew finding rediscovering this gift your biggest message as you're discovering this gift today you want to this time treat it with so much care it's like something in your soul already knows that you want to be careful with this what is this gift pile number three? I'm so intrigued. Right, so you have Vishnu. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Having Vishnu in your reading. Wow. Okay. Pretty big. There's no question about it. Okay. Wow. Okay, let's take a look at your tarot cards and see. This one's sticking out. Let's take it. What spiritual gift or ability do you have that can improve your life right now? Okay. So... Did a mistake is it meant to be no i think i should adjust it again because um part of this deck was not taken i'm sorry guys this is the first time this happens but it must have a, a significance here a spiritual significance all right so that's out must have a like oh you're readjusting something like tarot, there, with tarot, we use our psychic powers to be able to decipher messages, right? So tarot is representing a spiritual gift. Also, maybe you didn't do it right the first time. Maybe you didn't use all of your powers. Maybe you weren't patient. Maybe you weren't observant. And this time you're reading wants you to use 
it all in the correct way to be patient to use this power because it is a dangerous power and you want to be very mindful that was my mistake be very mindful about um, how you use it being very when you start using it you want to be mindful um, because looking at my mistake in your reading uh, I wasn't mindful. I took a part. I, I left a part of it. So that's what I'm realizing in your reading so far. What is up here? Pile number three. So cool. <laughs> wow. Let's see what this is all about. Okay, so pile number three, you have the Ace of Cups upright. You have the Devil card in reverse. Oh, no, 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 no. The Devil card upright. This is in reverse, actually admiring the person keeping you stuck or the thing that's keeping you stuck right so the devil card upright you have the three of cups upright cool you have the four of swords upright you have the sun card in reverse so let's keep the reversal a bit up so we can see it you have the page of swords upright the King of Pentacles in reverse. Let's keep it up top a little bit. You have the Ten of Swords upright. The Queen of Wands in reverse. The Eight of Wands upright. And finally, you have the Queen of Swords in reverse. So that's what it looks like in reverse. We see an older lady here holding the light, here holding the shadow. Mm -hmm. Maybe waiting until it's too late could be one thing. Let's see. Also, there are clouds here and it's a clear blue. It's not clear, but it's a beautiful blue sky. Here it's very crowdy on a gloomy day. Okay. So we've got three reversals, the sun, the queen of swords, the queen of wands, and the king of pentacles. So other, so a major arcana and three court cards showing us that there was a pause with the four of swords and the gift somehow being put off. It's still there. It's still the sun card, but kind of being... Maybe you're not being able to access it, see it, because it's a gloomy day, right? You're not able to see this gift or you weren't able to see this gift in the past. Uh, to, to give you the time to heal this karma. Because with the devil card being present, the, the devil card also talks about bad karma. Uh, can keep you and others stuck in a really bad cycle. And so the good news here, you've cleared the cycle, you're ready to begin anew. That's clear here in your reading for sure. And with the Three of Cups, now you're going to be using this gift to help others, but now, but in a more mature way. Because the three court cards in your reading, the three major ones, you know, the kings and the queens, it did, it did seem like in the past you had major power, that you have certainly abused uh, and it hit back on you and others. Okay, new start, new beginning. Let's see what this gift is. Let's take a closer look and see what this gift is. I certainly feel with Vishnu that this is a gift that is 
that not many others have for one reason or the other why mm. maybe you it needs a lot of work to have or oh wow wow you know what maybe it is a gift that was given to you like a boon in one of the lifetimes by a great energy an angel a great being or something you were given a boon for doing something a great karma that's what i'm picking up you've done great power and so you've been gifted that's why you've been gifted a boon or you've been gifted a power that's why not many people get to have this power You can see here, the life force within us is the same power that created the universe. I feel like you've been given some, uh, how do we call it, godlike power or something. Godlike power that gave you so much power without balance could truly corrupt. You may have, pile number three, not gonna lie to you. <laughs> You may have in a past life, it's not you, so, but in a past life, you may have done something pretty nasty. Hmm. And so uh, over lifetimes, you've been, this gift has been like, once a gift is given, it's there. And that's why you have the sun card, but it's kind of like you didn't have access uh, to this gift for a while, good while. And I feel again, as we've just said, you, it's, it's a dangerous gift if not used the right way and where you took it previously and misused it. I feel like in this time lifetime, you are clear to take it and make the choice of using it in the right way. Ten of Swords shows the end of a cycle. And we can see the end of this whole past cycle it must have been like very pretty bad and now with the page of swords you're now ready to rediscover this power right the question is what is this power <laughs> let me think about it with vishnu we're of course seeing creation let me turn on the light. That's better. Actually, it makes me think. Turning the light. This gift will later on um, lead to enlightenment. Like, if you use it the good way, you can help with enlightenment. Uh, yeah. Also, Vishnu is expansion creation but also expansion you know the it's it's um it's said that the entire universe is filled with vishnu which means expansion it's ever expanding i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it <laughs> expansion Actually, we can look at what Vishnu carries. It is grabbing my attention. I know the disc is for power. I know the lotus, of course, is for fertility. And the conch, I believe it's what it's called for the sound uh, representing the ohm, the original sound. Oh, this gives me an idea. And I, I know that the mace symbolizes the strength of time. Wait, so maybe this is the power 
of spoken words to bring things into existence in time and space, in our time and space. Could you have a power of speaking things into existence? I know that this power exists. I cannot remember what is called speaking things into existence. There was, I think it was VAC something. I can't remember. VAC. So I would say yes, because the cups, look at that. Witty look. I think we got it. <laughs> the cups, they touch the lips. I think it is spoken words. Wow. I think, oh my God, that's why it was taken for a while. Taken meaning you were saying it, thinking it and saying it, and it wasn't happening for a while. And this power has finally been renewed. Maybe as you're listening to your reading, this now, starting now is the time of your life where karma has been fully cleared. You've grown spiritually, transcended, and you are now re-given that gift. It's yours once more. Let's now shift the reversals in your reading to understand what the message is. Of course, the first me message with the queens and the kings is balance. To use it with balance. To use it to manifest the things that you want with good intentions for all and not with greedy intentions. To use the spoken word to lead with love and not through the need of being admired. Wow. This has just been, look at that, new starts. This has just been renewed for you, pile number three, and you want to be careful. I think uh, since it's being renewed to you, you're obviously, you've spiritually grown and transcended, and the universe knows that you can handle this power now. And to use this power with the Queen of Swords with good intentions. See, we saw the light and the shadow. Always for the greater good for yourself and others. To, to think through the light and not the, not the ego. From the healthy part of the ego and not the shadow. To use it to heal yourself first. Because look at that. Yes. Look at that, pile number three. To use it to heal yourself first. Before you use it. Before you use this power in the outside world. Wow. So you're being guided through your reading. And that's a great thing. That's the new power that has been renewed, that can help improve your life right now, not through, and look, it's the only one that I kept upright without meaning to. It's, uh, it's been renewed to help your life first, not through yet spoken words of manifestation, not yet through spoken words of leadership, but of, First, finding the light within you so that these automatically reverse. And you will be using these words to expand this light energy within you, as within, so without. And bring enlightenment into, your world, world, into the world, which will also reverse the sun card in your energy. So... You're being guided to use this power, spoken words of internal healing first before you use it on the outside. So this means spoken words of 
seeing perhaps where the shadow lies and using your powerful words to heal it and reverse it. Like, uh, I need this or I need this person. You realize you're thinking in that way and you can start using your spoken power to say, I am fulfilled. It's lovely to have these things in my life, but I am fulfilled. I am healing. I am happy. I am feeling good about myself every single day. Now, these affirmations are going to work for you because you have the power of the spoken word. So use these affirmations and learn their power within you first, which will give you the advantage of knowing how to use your power and your tool so that when you start using it on the outside, you will know how to use it right so that you can manifest what you want into your life without wreaking havoc. And you can draw people to you for the right reasons and not from a place of shadow. And later on, this word will have so much power that it will expand in the universe. It's kind of like you were being disciplined before you were given, re-given this gift. Where you can fly off with it. Your word can help heal. You never know. Maybe a, a word that you say can help heal the collective con uh, consciousness. Collective unconscious. You will have true power. Uh, pile number three. And with true power comes great responsibility. You want to be very mindful with what you say because it's not only wreaking havoc on the outside, but in your karma as well. So you want to be very careful when you intentionally use these words. And perhaps you used it in the past to be admired. And perhaps you are meant to be admired because you are a leader, a healer. But um, it has to come from the right place. Otherwise, this sort of power can um, push you to do things that later on may not be right, coming out of things that may want to be healed. And so you're being guided to think well before you do the spoken word. And the spoken word obviously comes from intention. Comes from having, feeling the power of it. Having the intention to create as you speak it. In a timely manner, this could be a mantra. Oh, this could be a mantra. So... Maybe you can use a mantra having this spoken word ability that you like, that is all about healing, to repeat it. Or you can use affirmations as your mantra. Because once you heal your shadow and you are here, one of the most capable people to be able to clear their karma easily, or I mean, sorry, their shadow easily through the spoken word once you feel balanced and you feel you have light to love all of the world good and bad and you have that desire to help in your heart everything and to accept and love everyone and to not be attached to anything and so on you are uh, allowed to use it in the outside world world so you want to think very well before you do it with that type of intention. Eight of Wands really signifies that whereas in the past it wouldn't work, like maybe you felt energy, you put the power, it didn't work. Now you're ready to fly off. This energy is activated. And like I said, to use it internally first. Wow. One of the blessings really of doing your readings on this channel 
is watching energy like that, uh, pile number three. So use it wisely, use it carefully. Your reading has educated you on how destructive it could be and what it led to in the past for a reason because it wants you to now pick it up with care and caution to use it mindfully and to use it on yourself first. And my dear pile number three, I truly wish you the best of luck. Today's reading really blew my mind. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. May you always be growing and healing within and healing the world without and being able to use your beautiful, unique powers in an amazing way. Sending you so much love, my dear pile number three. This was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. It tr helps the channel tremendously. Subscribe so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I do post readings nearly every single day. And it would be lovely to have you as part of this community. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.